Hi everybody! I was so exhausted in March, I don't even remember what I did the whole month. So I tried a local subscription box, went to the nice farm and explored the new hip side of Shamshui Po. So let's get into the video. I really love subscription boxes and usually I try the makeup ones. But the problem is that the majority of services are outside Hong Kong and sometimes the shipment can be a little bit pricey. So I was doing my research on the subscription services based in Hong Kong. Are there any and what kind? While the majority of services I found a little bit overpriced, I managed to find a good one. So this box called Jeng is a lifestyle subscription which is quite cool. I'm a bit tired of makeup heavy boxes, to be honest. And as I understand, you can order one each season. I ordered this spring one. I doubt I would ever try any of these brands just by myself. And with this box, I can discover something new and interesting. And the price is quite good for the amount of products you get. We've got here some stickers, face masks from the brand Kaze, I guess. Plus it's a local brand, a very young one, started in 2020. I feel like pandemic really inspired a lot of people to start their own brands of face masks. Then we've got this travel pouch from Sweaty Betty, useful thing to have. Then we have some supplements with sea cucumber powder. I'm trying to be careful with some unknown supplements. The packaging is not really informative. Like. What does it supposed to do? Can't really figure it out, I need to do more research. Another weird thing are these mushroom coffee pots for mine, beauty and etc. It's cool that they are trying to be environmental and the pots are biodegradable, but one tiny problem, I don't have a coffee machine. This is called La Flute and for some reason the brand is really trying to force us to drink champagne or any other alcohol out of this thing. I'm just drinking my cola out of it. I hope they don't mind. I was always curious to try some eco beauty products. I just find them a little bit expensive. And now I have a perfect opportunity to try an eco shampoo bar. Coconut water tastes like coconut water. It just has a cute pink tint. Next up is a bottle of hot sauce. I really love the packaging. Then we have a peanut butter from a local brand. I personally don't really like peanut butter, so I gave it away to a friend, but it looks cute. I love candles, and I've never had a candle this size. This is a win for me. We have a travel set from John Masters Organics, and I wanted to try this brand a while ago, but they kind of disappeared, but I guess they're back now. And the last two things here are the makeup products, eyebrow pencil and a liquid lipstick. I'm wearing it right now. Once again, I appreciate that they promote local brands and they focus on ecological products as well. Probably one thing that I didn't really like from the box are the face masks. Should I be happy that my face is so tiny? These masks are just devouring my face. And what's up with this detail right here? It makes the mask bigger and less comfortable. And this one makes me look like I'm a plague doctor. Which suits what's going on in the world, but do I want to look like that? But at least these masks inspired me to get out of my comfort zone. Before I was only wearing some simple white masks, but now I tried some colorful ones and I quite like them. It's weird to think that we went from fighting for masks, them being sold out everywhere and cost like an arm and a leg, to being a fashion statement piece. You won't believe how many different patterns you can find in Hong Kong now. And even some seasonal like Halloween, Christmas, Chinese New Year. Are the masks a new fashion accessory? to explore the Kaduri farm in new territories. On their website it said that due to social distancing measures and stuff like that, they only allow 1000 visitors per day. Not a lot for Hong Kong if you think about it. That's why we decided to go there as early as possible to make sure we get in. And we got there around 10.30. I didn't expect to see such a long line of people. Thankfully the line was moving quite fast. 
Obviously, there were many people inside the farm, which I imagined this place a little bit different. I thought it was more quiet and less people, but come on, it's Hong Kong and I'm delusional. As I found out, the farm was originally open to aid poor farmers in new territories, but since then it turned into a nature conservation center. This place is very pretty and let me show you around a little bit. They have some exotic animals there. I think it's my first time seeing a real crocodile. So cute. And flamingos were so stunning. So graceful and full of themselves, like supermodels. And there was also an exhibition. You can enjoy some art besides enjoying the nature. I highly recommend to visit this beautiful place. In busy cities like Hong Kong, it's so important to slow down sometimes and enjoy some nature. During my first year in Hong Kong, I was working in a local school in Shamshipo. And at that time, Shamshipo seemed to me like a very local place with local restaurants and shops. And people were staring at me like they've never seen a foreigner before. But recently, I noticed that Shamshipo started turning into a more young and cool area, with new hip coffee shops and restaurants opening there. Would you like me to give you a tour around the new hip area of Shamshipo? Tell me in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon. Bye!